In this chapter, Bogna is building the Mandalorian's jetpack. Welcome to Chapter 5 of our Mandalorian series. Over the past month, my team and I at Hacksmith Industries have been piecing together our very own Mandalorian suit. In Chapters 1 through 4, we built the flamethrower, the blaster and spear, the helmet, and Grogu's preferred method of transportation, his floating cradle. We're halfway to the epic finale where I will don the suit for the first time and put it to the ultimate test. You definitely don't want to miss it. After four chapters, we've decided to get Ian in on the action. So in the next chapter, he'll be calling on his experience from the early days of the channel, working on Batman builds. The grapple gun is near and dear to his heart. And if you want, that video is available early, as in right now, exclusively to our members. If you're not already a member and want early access to all our videos, click the link below. We saw a lot of you guys talking about this t-shirt in the comments below. So I'm excited to announce that we've actually released a limited edition Hacklorian t-shirt. Just visit hacksmith.store to get yours before they're all gone. When dealing with science fiction, there are obviously some things we just can't do. As a channel, we've made a ton of episodes attempting to fly like Iron Man. I even had the opportunity to travel to California and take Richard Browning's jet suit for a quick test. But unfortunately, a real working jetpack just isn't in the cards for us. Yet. Especially one as compact as Mando's. But the suit just wouldn't look complete without this awesome tech strapped to his back so we're still going to push forwards, and I'm sure we can find some way to work in a bit of fire. And of course, his missile. There's no one I trust more when it comes to jet engines, so Bogdan is going to take it away. We need to find a way to fit all these components and parts inside a Mandalorian suit. We have the power pack for the flamethrower, the speed controller and batteries for the grappling hook, as well as the Arduino that controls the entire suit. The best place to hide it is going to be in the jetpack, because it is essentially just a backpack. We also need to make room for all the jetpack components themselves, and that, my friends, is a lot of parts. You know, one of the most rewarding parts of growing Hacksmith Industries is building an amazing team of talented people to create projects. Plus, we have a ton of fun along the way. That's why I love playing AFK Arena, and I've played AFK for quite a while. I've built up an exciting and powerful team of heroes from seven unique factions. The strategies and adventures with these heroes are endless. AFK has all the classic RPG elements and doesn't require a huge time investment, perfect for when I need a break from building armor. You can collect over 100 heroes for free. I wish my team would work for free. Anyway, they look amazing. My favorite hero is Muriel the Burning Light because she's a freaking fire sorcerer and you know how much I love fire. I have my dream team, but what's yours? Download and play AFK Arena during its anniversary and get 100 summons and one special gift code. This bonus is unprecedented, so you definitely don't want to miss it. So what are you waiting for? Use my link below to build your dream team with 100 free summons today. So what are we looking at here, Bogdan? So this is the backing plate for the jetpack, and I'm kind of thinking to mount the speed controller somewhere in the middle since it's the largest component. And then the batteries uh, kind of fit just on the sides there. The control board, the Arduino can go right in the middle and that clears up space on the sides because on the actual jetpack, he's got these two cylinders, which uh, we can just, you know, substitute for our flamethrower components. And flamethrower, nice, yeah. yeah. So these will fit right there. Probably get some hose clamps that are easy to remove so we can take these in and out. Um, and then the only other thing is the two valves for controlling the, the flow. Okay. So those will go up there. Awesome. And how is this going to stick to my back? I don't know, I was thinking straps or something. I'm going to be integrating this kind of harness thing into the costume. Okay. I think what we can do is basically almost make an interface plate off the back hmm. that your jetpack then can quickly be attached to. Because the problem is Mando doesn't wear the jetpack like a backpack. Yeah. So it's literally like floating off of his back. So I'm thinking maybe add some mounting holes up here. Yep. and then uh, use some kind of quick clips or some uh, wing nuts or something to secure it. And then for the grappling hook components, the speed controller and the batteries, we're going to want to be able to use the grappling hook Ian's designing separately. 
So maybe we could make this modular as a sub-assembly that you can actually install onto the jetpack or remove from the jetpack in case we want to use it just in a regular backpack or whatever else when we're doing that test. Yeah, that should be no extra effort. I know you said you don't want it to fly. We should at least try, like we've got the jet engines, we might as well see what it would take to do that. Well, Let's no. take a look, okay. Okay, so we get about 27 kilograms of actual thrust out of this engine. Um, let's see what this entire thing weighs. Eight and a half kilos. Okay, and you weigh how much? Uh, about 65 kilograms right now. Um, and then the armor? Probably about 20 kilograms. And Ian's grappling hook winch, that's probably another 12 kilograms. And uh, the flamethrower? All right, so what's our, what's our weight budget? 112.5 once he finishes the calculator. Probably about 112 and a half kilograms. I'll just round that up to 115. And we want about a 70% throttle ratio. It's about 165 kilograms of thru thrust that we need. Divide that by 27 kilograms per engine. Okay, so we need about six jet engines. Theoretically, if you had two in your backpack, one on each leg and one on the arm. You know what that reminds me of? Richard Bradley. Gravity's jet suit. Yeah, we'd actually need more jet engines, jet engines than them because they only have five. Okay, so I guess the jet engine and trying to fly is probably not very practical. Can we at least make this look more like a jetpack? Yeah, so what I was thinking is in chapter one, we had these blowtorch nozzles and these just run on propane. We have propane on the system, so that's not an issue. Fairly easy just to attach these to the bottom and the flame looks exactly like the one in the movie. In season two of The Mandalorian, we see the jetpack fly by itself where the jet engines actually have thrust vectoring, not unlike a SpaceX Starship. Right. Could we do something like that? Yeah, I think so. A uh, pan tilt mechanism for these would be fairly simple. Well, let's do that. Cool. So I'll get to designing this, I'll finish all this up, and I guess I'll get Ben to design a pan tilt mechanism for this. Let's make it real. Awesome. Let's do it. Thrust vectoring is much simpler than it sounds. Any engine applies a single force in one direction. What thrust vectoring is, is pivoting the engine to change the direction of the force to allow you to steer. In our case, we won't actually be flying, so we don't need to steer but we still want it to look cool, just like me. I bought this simple servo pan tilt module for 20 bucks online, and I need to go into SOLIDWORKS and design a mounting bracket to mount this gas nozzle to this servo. Let's hop into SOLIDWORKS. In order to mount all the pieces, we first need to drill all the mounting holes. The holes are done, now it's time to bend it to its final shape. Well that perfectly even. Next up, the speed controller and batteries. This is the mounting plate that James asked for to make the components removable. Pro tip for easy wire management, lots of zip ties and flush cutters to make sure that the zip ties when you cut them don't cut you. This goes right here. Before I go any further on mounting, I'm going to build the covering plate as well as the two tubes that hold the flamethrower components. While Bogdan works on the jetpack, I'm going to be designing a PCB. It's going to control the thrust vectoring nozzles, the whistling birds, the flamethrower, the missile, and it's all going to interface with the button pad I made back in chapter one. I'm using Altium Designer. You can take a closer look at this PCB using Altium Viewer. Let's get to it. Throw these servo mounts over here. All right, this is looking pretty good. It's a good thing I added all those extra buttons because this PCB has a lot of outputs. If you want to learn about our design, check out our schematic at maker.io. PCBs are still something we outsource, and there's not a better, faster, more affordable place to go than JLC PCB. They offer great boards at a quick turnaround. The cover will complete the jetpack's look. The jetpack cover is the most complicated piece of this build. Multiple angles and different shapes. If I don't get this right, the whole project will suffer. The 
that's a 50 degree bend. So that's gonna go this way. That's everything. Let's go weld it. That's the backing plate. Next, we need the round tubes to hold the propane, the fire extinguisher, and the rocket. Now, we just have to roll them, similar to what we did with the flamethrower gauntlet. Time to weld. That's one, let's do this one now. These tubes are done now, and I've made a duplicate in order to hold the propane tank as well. Next, what we need to do is attach these caps on the end to hold the propane tank and the fire extinguisher tank from falling out. Then, we're gonna weld on this bracket here, which will actually hold the solenoid for activating the flamethrower. But before we get that mounting bracket welded on, we have to first make a cutout for this filling port here. We've got the fire extinguisher tube, we've got the propane tube, we've got the rocket tube, and the backing plate. I think we're ready to join everything. Now the side tubes. Ready? And there we go, one fully welded back plate. Next up, we need to 3D print some end caps for the top of these. Let's get those going. All right, this thing is looking pretty good. There's still a lot of work to do, but before I get to that, I'd like to make sure it fits on James's harness. Hey James, this thing's ready for test fitting. Ooh, I just finished making the plate for the harness, so nice. let's see if they go together. Um, the jetpack will sit on this kind of hook and then attach to the, those two bolts, and it'll actually be basically floating off my back, because this is actually gonna be inside my costume. So the only thing coming out of the costume will be those two bolts and that hook, which should look really cool. Theoretically, this should just be able to fit right onto those two hooks, and then right onto those bolts. And then I've got the uh, wing nuts over here. Yep. Wow, that is, that is pretty heavy. There you go. How does that feel? I think it works. I've just put together these two connectors, which are gonna route propane to both of our nozzles as well as the flamethrower. The propane comes in here, diverges into these two hoses here, into these two valves, 
and that's what powers the two nozzles. And then there is basically a switch here so we can turn on and off the flamethrower where this nozzle connects to. And finally, everything connects to Caleb's PCB. Okay, I'm done with this for now. Next up, we're gonna add some more decorational pieces to this plate over here and here. Time to put together the flamethrower mechanism. Time for the final touches. told you we'd get fire in there somehow. After five chapters, we're halfway through our Mandalorian series. We still have a ton of amazing content coming your way before the epic finale. And in chapter six, Ian will build Mando's grappling gun. And if you just can't wait another week for more Mandalorian content, become a member right now for early access to see next week's video. This is the way.